Warning. Due to three whole episodes of content being corrupted in the process of editing, I and you now have no idea what is going on. The Grand Slamwich Prison Architect. Welcome back. Yes, as the intro said, three episodes worth got corrupted in editing in the process of moving old edited video files over to a new video software. So, I have to remember what's going on, and you will have no idea what's going on. And it'll be like starting a whole new game in an old prison. So, I believe in the last episode, we were just finishing up cell block B, which is this part right here. This is where all of our... Um, Medium security, regular security guys are going to go. We converted the old wing into nothing but minimum security. And this is kind of going to be our quick changeover bank, as it were. You know, these guys are going to come in, do their time, get out, make us money. Uh, the real issue is going to be here, these guys. These are all going to be minimum security. And they're going to have their own, like, goods and services and all that stuff. And uh, we started working on protective custody. And with protective custody, we can stop having murders, hopefully. Catch the snitches, catch the ex-law enforcement, and have them serve their time in here. So let's get right down to it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start time, double time, make things run a little bit faster, and see exactly how the world be doing. It's been so long since we've been in Prison Architect, I have forgotten quite a bit. Um, I believe... We were going to turn all these into rooms, get them all incorporated with cell doors, and let everybody kind of get settled. He doesn't want to be an informant, which is fine. We'll break him. And I need to remember what these rooms were for and who all I was allowing in here. Because we only wanted um, minimum security to use this visitation. Because if they want to visit with their families in a room, they can... No, earn it. Get busted down. And now the fun part comes with figuring out where everybody goes. And likewise, where no one is allowed to go. Oh. That didn't take long, did it? Oh, wait, who just died? Oh, died of an overdose. Well, it's what you get. It's what you get when you come to the Grand Slam, which and you expect to live. So, if I remember, we said they were going to share a chapel and a classroom. And they were going to have their own things here. Or were they going to share this? Were they going to share a bunch of stuff? Because, I mean, we were planning on... They definitely needed their own parole room. I remember that much. So let's go to objects and get the desk. Where's the desk? Uh, visitation. Visitation table. Here we go. So there's a parole office right there. And when it's finished, we'll give them access to light. Or not access to light, access to the room. We'll give them access to the room and all that fun stuff. And once we get all of these beds filled in, like all of these actually finished as jail cells, proper and functional, um, we're going to have quite the rush. But hopefully we should make a lot of money. And see, people are starting to get released early already. Like I'm going to need to start having the minimum security be outside at a different time in the yard than everybody else, just so they don't get, you know, screwed by the massive influx of medium and higher until we can build a maximum security and supermax sections up here. And then we'll build our death row section right here. And then we'll execute somebody and we'll be finished. We will have achieved the mission. Now, um, minimum security is going to have their own yard, their own visitation, and a few little places to work and stuff like that. Uh, but they will not have their own accommodations. I don't know what I mean by... Of course they'll have their own accommodations. They'll have their own rooms and stuff. But they're not going to have as much as everybody else. Because, you know, they're in protective custody. They have basically free right to do whatever the hell they want. Except go into areas where they'll get killed. So if this is ready... Then we can open up a door... There. 
and assign a guard to this room. And then it's not visitation. It's, where is it? Parole. It's not that. Okay. Again, yeah, I don't know where anything is anymore. Three episodes worth of content being corrupted is ridiculous. Really, really set me back. And kind of threw the whole series into chaos. But, you know, that's what you get. And there's more deaths. Oh, he just killed for being a snitch. Oh, he had a knife on him and everything. Damn. Well, let's get this section up and running. Uh, as quickly as possible. So we can start throwing people in here. Objects. Serving table. And for the most part, if I remember correctly, I had everything pretty well planned out up here. Like, I don't remember what this is. I think that's... I think this is visitation up here. This is their parole room. And this is like their laundry room or something? Hmm. Oh well. They're gonna get beds. And these guys get private beds, because, you know... They're, they're private. They still committed crimes, so we're not going to let them get off easy. But, you know, you never, you never know with people in protective custody. You never know. Kitchen, objects, cooker. Bam. Um, fridge, right there. And a sink, right there. And I probably should have had another... Well, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and move these things. So we can have some fridges right there. And then their cookers right there. Because they're not going to be cooking for a lot of people. I mean, I imagine maybe... Uh, protective custody will have maybe four people in it at once. Maybe higher. Maybe not. We'll see. Now these guys are going to have their own little bookcases, like right here. Which I'm sure they'll like. And um, they won't have their own uh, showers. Like how we said that uh, the medium security area is going to have their own showers like this. So they don't have shower areas to basically at will kill each other. Uh, we really shouldn't have to worry about it too much with these guys. So it should be okay. And there's that. And getting everything back in shape will be good. And I know there's no prisoners assigned to eat there. Because it's protective custody. And if we don't know anything about anybody, we can't really put them in protective custody. James Platter. 66% coverage. Confidential informant. What about you? You want to be an informant? Nope. Okay. Over here... Don't have anybody. Yeah, the minimum security, really, we aren't going to get too much out of them. Which is fine. Oh, yeah, and we need to put a water boiler right there. And this water boiler will provide access over here and up here. One in solitary, two in lockdown. Two in lockdown. Where's the other lockdown? Uh, why does it say there's two in lockdown? There's only one. Oh, the chief's calling. According to some of our guards, a new radio host on the station prisoners listen to has been saying a lot of things that are riling, riling the inmates up. Remove the radios for the time being. Okay, I can do that. As long as it's not the governor. Okay. Uh, do we have any radios? They've got their uh, TV in the common room. Oh, they do have a radio. We're going to go ahead and dismantle the radio. And they're going to be all like, where'd the radio go? And say like, well, get a load of this. You're getting a TV instead. And then they'll think like, oh, awesome. A, a little TV. Now we can watch two different videos in the common room. 
And then they've, they've taken the bait. They've fallen for it. If they ever remove the radio. Oh, here it comes. Bam. And now, now they're all going to be, they're going to be so excited. Uh, what am I looking for? Commoner. Wee. Bam. One big commoner. And then we can say uh, bookshelves. They get their own little bookshelves because we like to keep them spoiled. You know, they'll be they'll be lining up at the bit to be confidential informants for us, which is exactly what we want. Now we can get everything else ready for the visitation. Oh, that's why it's missing, because it already has a light there. Okay. Uh, door. Boop. Boop. And that is the washroom, right? Yeah. Uh, rooms. Laundry. Objects. Washing machine. Oh, I literally just dragged the thing right there, didn't I? Ugh. Well, here's the thing about this. You can dismantle all these utilities, right? Because you can't rotate the washing machines, and it looks... Nope. <laughs> And it looks terrible, just forced up against this wall right there. So we're going to say, come down here. And, I mean, that's way too many washing machines, honestly. Probably just need two. And then, like that. And then, boom. No, right there. That should be enough. That should be plenty. You know, it's not like um, this that's going to require all the washing machines going all the time to take care of, like, a hundred, maybe more prisoners. I don't think we'll be able to get up to 100 instantly, but, man, it might. Might get up there pretty quick. All right, rooms. Visitation. More visitation. Bam. Perfect. And then, parole. Uh, another parole building. Here we go. Now we're going to add that. And that should be good. And then the laundry's done. And we can say everybody who works, everyone who's in protective custody works in the laundry room. That's their job. They just, you know, do their own laundry. Oh, staff. Let's add five more guards because it's about to get crazy in here. Because once we're done setting all this up and we know this is good to go, the uh, the real madness begins. Oh, and I think I had planned to put some other stuff in here. But we'll work on that, you know, eventually. Jail door. Now it's time to make assignments. Informants. He is unknown. Snitch. So I wonder how they figure out snitches. Hmm. I'm I'm sure prisoners have their own unique ways. And see, they're all watching the TV well. He isn't. They can't see the TV. But they're all sitting around watching the TV completely blissfully ignorant to the fact that their radio is missing. So we we tricked them. Rooms. Now we're going to come in here and say this is all protective custody stuff. You know, nobody's allowed in here. And let's go ahead. It's currently working in free time. Confidential informant is currently eating. And oh, man, look at all that money we just dropped. But it's the price we pay, you know, for 
taking care of our prisoners and trying to make them happy. And it might not be worth it, but sometimes it's worth it. So they're all working away. Bobs are all raring to go. Now what do my armored guard deployments look like? Oh yeah. And this is going to take on this kind of look. How many armored guards do I have? Three armored guards. Where are they all stationed? Okay, there's two. The two armored guards basically patrol there. This ward at all times. Um, the armored guards with tasers and staff vests should be more than enough to take care of the uh, minimum security. And now... I still need to remember what we're doing with this. But that's okay. Because it is time to put all hell on our staff. Maybe for my sanity and the sanity of the guards, we won't just add all of them as prisoners. You know, we'll do it in waves. We'll do it in little bits. Because I imagine it can get kind of crazy. Alright. Yeah, let's do it. It's time to expand. That will add 16 prisoners inbound. Right? 18 prisoners arriving at 8 a.m. And then it might start looking like we'll add uh, more armored guards. And just generally start expanding the prison security detail because it's about to get real. Very real. And they're going to start tearing down the whole building. You're going to rip a hole in the ceiling. And then... The protective custody boys will have their own outside to look at and cry. <laughs>